The Duchess of Sussex offered up a quick change as she joined Prince Harry for a whirlwind final day of engagements in Morocco on Monday. Meghan, 37, swapped a casual ensemble of black jeans and a striped top for a chic monochrome look as she and Harry whipped through a packed schedule that took in visits to a cookery school and an equine center. For her final engagement of a day, a visit to a local market, Meghan slipped into an elegant pleated black dress and a cream jacket from Babbitton by Aridzia that she first wore while watching husband-to-be Prince Harry play polo in 2017. The tailored cream jacket, which costs £151, contrasted perfectly with her floaty pleated little black dress. She kept her accessories simple with a pair of classic black Manolo Blahnik slingbacks, costing £575. The Duchess kept her hair slicked back into a ponytail to show off her stunning £164 gold earrings from French designer Gas Bijou. The mother-to-be, who has favoured designer labels on the royal tour, kicked off the day in a comfortable khaki J. Crewfield mechanic £185 jacket which has been a favourite since before she met Harry. She paired it with a Breton-style long-sleeve top and failsafe black jeans. And while she certainly opted for a more dressed-down look this morning the Duchess added a little glamour to her ensemble in the form of a pair of £194 heeled Stuart Wiseman ankle boots. Perhaps the most expensive part of her outfit were her distinctive £290 earrings from Canadian brand Dixand. Harry changed too, swapping his chinos and puffa jacket for a sand-coloured suit as he joined Meghan for a visit to the social entrepreneur's event and market in the Andalusian Gardens. The Duke and Duchess will hear about youth empowerment in Morocco from a number of young social entrepreneurs. The parents-to-be were seen admiring the traditional Moroccan arts and crafts on display in the walled public garden amid exotic plants, flowers and fruit trees. The visit will also see Meghan and Harry meet with King Mohammed VI. The couple will then travel to Rabat Airport where they will catch their flight back to London later this afternoon. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex vowed to return to Morocco with their baby after sampling a selection of classic national dishes on Monday. Harry and Meghan took up the offer of a meal for the whole family from top chef Moha Fidel, who hosts the North African nation's version of Master Chef. He told the couple, I hope to cook for you next time, as they joined him for a cookery demonstration with underprivileged children in the capital Rabat. The Duchess replied, the whole family next time. The chef said, you come with your baby to Marrakesh next time referring to the fact that the prince is believed to have visited in 2018, just before his wedding. We would love to, said Meghan. Come with your baby and I will cook for all three, he told Harry as he joined them. The Duke, clearly inspired by the delicious spread he had sampled, replied, we will cook for you. He is already a fan of the chef's work having visited his famous Star Mohi restaurant on a secret visit to Marrakesh just before the royal wedding, in April 2018. Although Moha would not be drawn on the secret trip, he admitted with a smile, he, Harry, loves pastio, the sweet and savory, and kefta. During their visit to the colorful Villa de Ambassadeur, a privately owned guest house set up with temporary cooking stations, the royal couple sampled an array of fragrant and spicy dishes including the pigeon paste Harry is so fond of, with Meghan declaring it delicious. I'm happy. Beamed the chef. They arrived at the ornately decorated residence to a traditional welcome of dates and milk, which both royals eagerly sampled. Inside they walked around the stations and chatted to the young cooks, aged between 9 and 18, stopping to try mince and onion pastries, Harry, and Harira, a spicy chickpea soup, both. Chef Moha handed them each a decorated ceramic bowl to try and they each took a sip. C'est délicieux, said Megan in French. What's in it? asked Harry, before joking, it's a secret recipe. One child said something in Arabic to the chef, who turned to the duke and said, he finds you a very good person. He is a good person, smiled the duchess, putting an affectionate hand on her husband's arm. The children are cared for by three different charities, including HADAF, an organization which employs young people with Down syndrome, L'Association Musulmane de Bienfaisance and the Lala Miriam Center, 
founded by King Muhammad VI's sister. Also on the menu, Moroccan pancakes with honey and almond butter, a recipe by Shireen Mala, taken from the Grendel cookbook which the Duchess helped to produce. The dish features in Together, our community cookbook, which became a bestseller after Meghan launched it on a visit the Al Manar Cultural Center, which is at the heart of the community devastated by the Grenfell Tower fire. The mother-to-be was seen putting on a tactile display with Prince Harry as the couple shared a sweet treat with a giggling Meghan unable to take her hands off her husband. Handed a pancake covered in amlu, a blend of almond butter, argan oil and honey, Harry took a huge mouthful. Big bite! Laughed Meghan. Bit late now! Replied her husband. Meghan developed the Together Cookbook idea over a series of earlier private visits where she cooked with the women of the Hub Community Kitchen there. Sales of the book have allowed them to refurbish the facilities and expand their work in providing freshly prepared food for those displaced by the tragedy as well as other community groups. Earlier this morning the Duchess of Sussex claimed she felt camera shy sometimes as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex began their second day in Morocco with a visit to the Moroccan Royal Federation of Equestrian Sports. The couple were there to learn more about the country's developing program of equine therapy for children with special needs, funded by King Mohammed, who Harry and Meghan will have an audience with later today. The couple watched a grooming session with three Shetland ponies, Caramel. A Palomino, Zena, a Piebald, and Molly, a black pony, with some of the children who have benefited from the equine assisted therapy, eat or equitherapy, program, in one of the club's outdoor manages. Has anyone got any carrots? joked Harry, noticing that Molly was shaking. She's a bit nervous, this one, he said. Megan joked, Well, we all get a little camera shy, I understand. The couple arrived to an unusual welcome committee in the form of the horses, who poked their heads out of their stables upon their arrival. Animal lover Meghan was eager to say hello with she and Harry seen petting the horses ahead of their tour of the equine center. They were also introduced to Louis Browski, from Holland, the founder of the center Social Cariot in Sale, an organization working with mentally and physically disabled young people. Mr. Browski who has trained horses for more than 30 years, is one of the country's leading figures in equine therapy. It was a challenge, he told them. I started with one child, but now 16 years later we have 100 children. My aim is for all disabled children to be fully integrated into Moroccan society. That is just so important, and this is just a gorgeous space you have here, said Megan before being introduced to some of the young people Mr. Browski brings to ride at the club. The couple also met with young people from disadvantaged backgrounds who have benefited from the programs at the center, together with mental health charity and individuals involved. Megan reverted back to her French again, wishing them bon journée. The equine therapy program relies on several organizations, including SAREC, the Royal Company for the Encouragement of Horses, SELA a mental health charity supporting vulnerable communities and SPANA, the Society for the Protection of Animals and Nature. Horse riding for children with special needs has been shown to improve children's communication skills, boost their confidence and help them build relationships.